Secretary of State Antony Blinken is in the Middle East today seeking to further extend the temporary ceasefire between Israel and Hamas. Earlier, he met with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu in Jerusalem. Later on, he also met with the Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas in Ramallah in the West Bank. His visit comes as Israel's military says within the last hour that two more hostages have been handed over to the Red Cross in Gaza City. Around 150 hostages are still thought to be held by Hamas. CBS News senior foreign correspondent Holly Williams is following the story. 97 hostages have now been released since the temporary ceasefire began. But I've been speaking with a senior Hamas leader who claims some of the hostages are dead. We are ready to give all evidences. Ghazi Hamad told us Hamas is willing to provide evidence that three hostages, four-year-old Ariel Bibas, his 10-month-old brother Kafir and their mother Shiri, were all killed in the Gaza Strip by an Israeli airstrike. Israel says it's assessing whether that claim is true. They pay the price because of the occupation. But, but that was a 10-month-old baby and a four-year-old boy. They have to impose a pressure on the, in the, their government to tell them that you push us to the hell. But Dr. Hamad, a 10-month-old baby and a four-year-old boy can't put pressure on the Israeli government. Why did they have to pay for the Israeli occupation? The Israelis they have a bigger problem that they occupy the Palestinian people. They have to exert pressure in Israel, their government, in order to tell them that you are going in the wrong way. Last night, Hamas handed over another 16 hostages, including an American, Liat Benin Atzili, a mother of three whose husband remains in captivity. Israel held up its end of the bargain by releasing 30 Palestinian prisoners, bringing the total to over 200. Hamad told us Hamas wants a permanent ceasefire to end the suffering of Palestinians in Gaza, where Hamas officials say over 15,000 have been killed by Israeli airstrikes and fighting. So what would it take for Hamas to hand over all the remaining hostages? We can uh, have a comprehensive uh, deal uh, that we can release all the prison, the Palestinian detention. At the same time, we can release all the hostages. There are thought to be around 6,000 Palestinians in Israel's prisons. And by Israel's count, around 150 hostages are still being held in the Gaza Strip. How many hostages do you have left in your hands that are still alive? I don't know. You don't know? The number is not so important. But what, what do you mean the number isn't important? People in Israel want to know whether their loved ones are still alive or not. No, we are 70 people now. And we are continuing to raise the civilians. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is here today, his third visit since this war began, meeting with both Israeli and Palestinian leaders. Anne-Marie and Vlad. All right, Holly, thanks. CBS News correspondent Lilia Luciano is joining us now from Tel Aviv uh, with more. Lilia, what details do we know about Secretary Blinken's meeting in the Middle East today? Well, Anne-Marie, we know that Secretary Blinken arrived late last night. We actually saw his uh, motorcade arrive uh, very late hours in the, in, in the night, just hours before the uh, ceasefire was set to come to an end, and just minutes before that it was announced that it was extended for one more day. I mean, we are here hoping and waiting that if there is going to be an extension to the ceasefire, uh, that at least you get a little bit of more time in advance, that perhaps it's done with more days uh, baked in. But for now, it's been just those very last minutes. And of course, the reporting uh, has to catch up on those decisions that are made with very little time. That said, Israel has received a list of 10 uh, hostages to be released today, in addition to the 70 other Israeli hostages and all of the other foreign nationals who've been released. Uh, in exchange of, uh, for those, of course, uh, Israel has released uh, an average of three Palestinian prisoners, most women and children, uh, or all of them so far, women and children from Israeli prisons. In terms of the the uh, Secretary of State's visit, we know, as you mentioned before, he's met with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, who thanked him for, of course, the U.S.'s support there. They've discussed and stressed, and from all of the communications from the State Department, uh, the importance of extending the truce. Uh, Secretary of State Blinken also talked about the crucial need to accelerate aid to get into Gaza. And one thing that we that we're 
hearing from the Secretary of State later in the day is that on top of denouncing, of course, that terrorist attack that Chris covered, he also told Israel that you have to immediately, that it is imperative to hold accountable extreme settlers uh, in the West Bank. And so he's been addressing many of the issues that are happening in the region, even within the ceasefire that have turned violent, whether it is from the IDF, in the case that Chris uh, uh, covered there, or uh, from settlers, or, of course, from Hamas. Uh, Lilia, thank you so much. Well, the temporary ceasefire between Israel and Hamas has been extended for a seventh day. The spokesperson for Qatar's foreign ministry says that the truce will follow the same parameters established last week, under which Hamas will free another group of hostages in exchange for the release of Palestinian prisoners by Israel. 97 hostages held in Gaza have been released in total so far, and this includes 16 who were freed yesterday. Some 210 Palestinians have been released from Israeli prisons and returned. So joining me now on the set is former U.S. Secretary of Defense Mark Esper. He was in active duty for more than 10 years and has also served as U.S. Army Secretary. Really uh, good to have you here so we can talk about this sort of fragile situation in the Middle East. Um, so first I want to talk about this ceasefire. So the original negotiations were um, to allow for an extension of the ceasefire for only 10 days, though. After that, um, Benjamin Netanyahu wants to get back to this war. But as each day continues, you wonder if there is a glimmer of hope that this extension could go beyond 10 days. Do you think that's there? I think it's possible, but this is indeed the, the tension, Anne-Marie, is on one hand, you have the need to pick up the offensive, prosecute the conflict, eliminate Hamas, but at the same time, the humanitarian part of this, which is not just uh, returning the hostages to Israel, but also assisting the people in Gaza, mm -hmm. making sure their needs, needs are met. And these two are, are at odds with one another. You know, every day that you return hostages and there's a pause in the conflict, that's more time for, ha for Hamas to regroup, to reposition, to rearm, to fortify its fighting positions, to booby trap the tunnels, to do all those things. And so, uh, look, it's, it's, a, it's a really tough situation. The Netanyahu government is uh, politically has to continue to release hostages. It's just that, that much domestic pressure. And as you know, you know, after October 7th, uh, Netanyahu and his government, the focus was eliminate Hamas, eliminate Hamas. I think since then, uh, most people, when we talk about that, recognize that eliminating Hamas may not be the goal, but breaking Hamas may be something that can be done. Um, that being said, I, I, my question is twofold. Can you break slash eliminate Hamas? Because we know it's more than just an organization, it's also a mindset, right? And if you do, who fills that vacuum? Yeah, look, that's the key question. And not, look, the, the intent is still to eliminate Hamas, right? They want it, the United States wants it, and the secret is most Arab governments don't want to see Hamas anymore. But what does that look like? In, in military terms, when we talk about defeating something, it would mm -hmm. be uh, removing their military capability, which is, which, which is possible. In this case, it would be going after the Hamas leadership, uh, those who perpetrated the attacks on October 7th, and eliminating their weapons and things like this. But the important thing, too, again, in military terms, when we talk about defeat, it means you have to prevent their ability to rejuvenate. And to do that, you have to cut off the flow of funding and arms from Iran. And so that's the bigger thing happening out there, is how do you, at right. the end of the day, deal with Iran and cut off that flow of arms? It's going not just to Moss, by the way, but mm -hmm. to Hezbollah, to the Houthis, to the Shia militia groups in Iraq. It's... It, it, Iran is the big problem in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. I, I, I got to let you go soon, so I want to ask you about another conflict that we haven't pay, been paying a lot of attention to, but it's Ukraine and Russia. Yeah. As you know, several weeks ago, a top general from uh, Ukraine said this, this conflict is at a stalemate. Um, some disagree with him, but he said, listen, we're not going to get over unless we see some huge technological advance mm -hmm. or something, because right now, the way that wartime technology is, each side knows what the other is doing, and they cannot really get ahead. Um, I want to ask you, if we stay in this position, if, if Ukraine and Russia, if that conflict stays there, will, do you think that there will be an appetite to continue supporting Ukraine? That's a great question. And look, I think it's the, the, the front has largely stabilized. And some may or may not call it a stalemate. It looks that way. Mm -hmm. There's some Russian advances in the north. And there's some Ukrainian attempts to cross the Dnieper in the south. But look, at the end of the day, I, I think that assessment is right. Russia is going to continue to put manpower and artillery into the play. And until Ukraine gets F-16s and long-range attackums and other equipment they need from the United States and Europe, uh, they won't have that 
technological capability to really create the breakthrough that's needed. And that's what we were waiting for in the summer and the fall was the breakthrough, mm -hmm. but it never materialized. And the question will be is, well, can, we, can we sustain that? Will Congress sustain it? And depending on what happens in the presidential election mm -hmm. 11 months away, uh, will the new president, whoever that is, want to sustain that? Right. Uh, former Defense Secretary Mark Esper, great having you here. Thank you. Thank you, Emily.